Well, Jan Langston, welcome to the Anatomy and Clay Learning System podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for making time. And uh, I have to say, uh, we really enjoy the background you've got there, the backdrop. <laughs> it's Thank you. quite quite visual. That's awesome. Um, before we get into a little bit about um, you and your background, could you just tell us about your high school, where the high school is located um, in, in your state and all that? Sure. Um, I am located in North Alabama. Um, Hartsell High School is where I teach. Um, we are maybe 40 minutes from Huntsville, Alabama, Rocket City. Okay, great, great. And how long have you been teaching there? I have been here at the high school for seven years. So um, I went to nursing school and graduated from nursing school in a long time ago, 1994. And I was a nurse for hmm, 24 years before I decided that I wanted to teach. Um, so I went back and got my master's in nursing education and found myself here at the high school teaching in what is known as the medical academy. Ah, we'll get to the medical academy and all, all that. What what prompted your switch into education? What 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 was there a spark or a moment? Well, when I went off to college, I didn't know if I wanted to teach or if I wanted to be a nurse. And I went into nursing because my grandfather was really sick at that time, and I just felt like that was my calling. Um, a lot that nurses do, not only caring for patients, but they have to teach patients a, a lot, such as how to take care of themselves when they go home. And um, I was OBGYN, so I had to teach my patients a lot about their babies and about themselves. So it was just, I wanted to teach. It was just uh, the next step for me. Was that an easy transition when it happened? Um. Well, for um, two years after I graduated, after I got my master's, I taught at a junior college here in um, North Alabama, and I taught there part-time and still worked at the doctor's office part-time, so I kind of had the best of both worlds, but the job at the high school opened up, and and I felt like it was a really good opportunity and it was full-time with state benefits, so I jumped on board, and I have to say this is probably my dream job. That's great. Well, one would think if you're the high school and looking at your application coming in with the now you've got the teaching um, training, but you have that all that experience, uh, real life experience, that that would be a slam dunk. Well, um, the teachers that I, other teachers that I work with within our program, they all went the same route as well. So okay. we have I think we have a um, hundred plus years in with all of us in nursing experience and over 50 something years in teaching experience all together. So wow. we've got that some great a strong. That's a strong department. <laughs> it is. It is. We're very yeah. proud of our program. That's great. Could you talk a little bit about um, the high school, the size of your high school and then, uh, you know, just tell us about how the medical academy works within the high school. Are there other academies as well, um, career-focused academies, or how does sure. that work? Well, our high school, I live in a, in a very small community, uh, maybe about 16,000 population, and okay. our high school has about 1,000 students. And of those 1,000 students, we we have anywhere in our medical academy between 200 and 225 students. So we have a lot of a big population that's within our academy. But our school is very fortunate. We have 10 different academies uh, that students can choose to participate in. And the, the focus is hoping that students can decide what they may want to do when they grow up. Um, you know, just because you take classes in the medical academy doesn't mean that you have to become a doctor or a nurse. It just means that, hey, yes, I do want to be in health care. And um, another benefit is, is if they decide they don't want to be in health care, 
they didn't waste their parents thousands and thousands of dollars in college to determine, I don't want to be in healthcare. So it's a win-win either way. But like I said, we have 10 academies here at the high school. Um, teaching is a, a different academy. We have an engineering academy. Uh, there are just several different ones that kids can choose from. So we're very fortunate. Yeah. What grade does the academy work start? Does that start when you first come into high school or? It starts in the ninth grade through the 12th grade when you're here at the high school. Prior to that, at the junior high, um, there are a few classes that are taught in uh, seventh and eighth grade. Wow. And, and once you're in an academy, can you move around? Yes, you can move around. You can move around. Okay. Um, but we do have like we have eight classes within our academy that we teach and for the students to get what is known as a cord or at graduation or a sense of accomplishment they have to have at least four classes within that academy that makes sense yeah that's great i was just about to ask so you set up the perfect segue what what courses do you teach well, um, I currently teach what is orientation to medicine, and then I do the human body structure and functions class, which is an anatomy class, and that's why I use the anatomy and clay. Yeah, that's great. What, uh, when did you come across anatomy and clay, and how long have you been using it? Well, I first was introduced to anatomy and clay um, during a summer conference for career tech educators and that was probably just my second year of teaching which here which was in 2018 and um i just knew i wanted to incorporate it because i really like hands-on teaching i learn well with hands-on um and i really wanted to incorporate it into my program so um I think that's where I became interested in it. And when I got back, maybe in the spring, I started really digging into it to, you know, see what all I would have to do to involve this program into my curriculum. And um, I think I had it by the end of that first that first year that I discovered it. So and I'm really glad that I that I did get it. So. That's great. Well, Tell me, tell me about that. Uh, what, what aspects do you like? And talk a little bit about just the students' response to learning from their end in that way. Yeah. Um, well, how I use the anatomy and clay is I really use it like a review after I've gone through a, a, um, a unit, uh, say the muscular system, we go through the muscular system through lecture and other uh, activities. But then we end the lecture with, or the unit with the students actually building the muscles. Um, and it gives them the chance to ask questions while they're putting the muscles on, you know, like the insertion of a muscle, the origin of the muscle, how the muscles move, you know, just different things like that. But the students love it because it's really a time, like I said, for review, but it's a time for them to come in. And what I do is I turn the lights down low and we have music playing and I have a little book that has step by step what I want them to do. So they're very relaxed. Um, they love showing off their work, but again, they get to ask questions and it is a review time. So I think they really like it. I'm adding the duodenum. Good job. Awesome. Good job. Thanks. Is that too thick? Nope, that looks good. Can you 
turn it for a weekend. <laughs> Good. Well, who came up with that's a really interesting concept I have never heard before about lowering the lights and playing music. <laughs> well, what what inspired that? They, um, I think the students did really. After my wow. first year, I was very structured and very, you know, I, I'm one that has to do it just right. And then I was realizing that I felt like I was stressing the kids out more than it was helping them to relax and understand things. And so we just came up with it together and it, it really works. It, re it really works. Is there so any I, perfect music? No, no, not really. They, we have a playlist <laughs> for each class. So whatever period that the class is in, they have a playlist on Spotify and I play it and we just, chill out and have a good time and they learn what they need to do. I think I'm going to have to ask for that playlist link to see what <laughs> is being. <laughs> <I'll> yeah. see <laughs> That'd be really great. So you let the students be their own D DJs. They're their own DJs for the. They're their own DJs, but they, um, you know, I, I think if the students can be involved and be in control of something, they're going to be more apt to relax and um, put forth a little more effort. And like I said, I think they they really like it. You know, it's not something yeah. that um, I don't grade them on it, you know, because we all have our different uh, ways of, of doing things. And I'm definitely not crafty myself, but they all want to do well with their mannequins. As you can tell from the mannequins behind me, yeah. they're in all different uh, shapes and sizes with their muscles and their organs, but um, the kids really love it. Yeah, that's great. Um, it looks like you have a pretty good supply of mannequins. Do you, we do you have, have a... 14 whole mannequins? So we have 28 half mannequins that the kids use. That's great. And do you have any um, tips or suggestions? Teachers sometimes talk about um, how to access resources to be able to pull the budget together to go out and purchase that. Did yeah. you use just general, general school funds for that or what did you do? Well, I actually was very lucky that when I was introduced to this program at my summer conference, I came home and I was super excited about it. And I just happened to be talking to the superintendent at a meeting that we were having and I mentioned it to her and she was all about it. She just thought it was great. And so I got funding from the central office plus funding from fundraisers that our program does. And so um, we were able to purchase it that way. That's and it, you know, basically it's a one-time purchase until mm -hmm. you need extra pay. So it's, it's a wonderful um, win for the kids. I think I've had this since, I think I said 2018, 2019 is when I got the mannequin. So I've only bought clay one time since then. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. That's great. But uh, we do keep our, uh, each student has their own little uh, case that they put their clay in. Um, and I did number the mannequins and the, little containers to match you know i really make the kids hold the, each other accountable for taking care of the mannequins you know because they're they're expensive but they're well yeah. worth it and the students have have fun they get a little birth certificate and they name their little mannequin at the beginning of the year and you know it, it's just something that the kids have enjoyed a lot that's great yeah gotcha why, why do you think hands-on hands learning works so well? What, what is it about that aspect of teaching and learning? Well, sitting here looking at the mannequin that's beside me, um, the students really, they like it because they understand, like right now we're talking about the digestive system. And, and as they're building the large intestine and knowing the different 
parts to the large intestine, then it gives them more of an understanding of how it all works, how it's connected to the small intestines and then how that's connected, you know. And so um, I think they just really enjoy seeing in miniature what we just talked about. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, in a three-dimensional way. It's, yeah, so yeah. Um, I, I think they just really enjoy that. And, you know, it's like, um, I think the quote for the anatomy and clay is that um, mind cannot forget what the hands have learned. And I, I just really, truly believe that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, have you had any students um, that you've followed after their graduation from high school who have gone into a, a medical or a related career? Oh, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. um, we have, or I have. Um, so one of my cohort, cohorts, her, this is her 17th year here at the school. And so she has seen multiple students. Um, currently, right now, we have four students in each year of medical school at UAB, which is the University of Alabama, Birmingham. So that's a really neat thing to be able to say. Yeah. But um, when we go into the hospitals, we see our students who have become doctors and nurses and physical therapists. So it, it's really exciting to see people follow their dreams. And um, like I was saying earlier, I worked at a community college for two years. And the things that those at that community college, I was in the nursing department, and the things that those nursing students were learning, our students learn here in the 10th and 11th grade. And wow. so when our students get to a program of study at a different, you know, in college or at a junior college, they're already well ahead of the students that they're going up against. And I think yeah. it really shows. Sure sounds like so. it. They've really got a got a jump on everybody. That's I think great. they do. Yeah. I think they do. That's great. Well, other than the music and the lighting, do you have <laughs> any other <laughs> any other uh tips or suggestions for maybe a teacher who's just starting to get to use it? I really liked your point about um not expecting perfection in the in the sculpture work to, to just to be relaxed about it. Yeah, um, one thing that that I would say is let the students kind of guide you in the way that they learn. Um, some students want to know exactly detail for detail, and others are a little more, you know, relaxed in their their learning environment and their uh, the way that they learn. So. I would just let the students kind of kind of guide you. Now, each class that I have, I do the same, not the same playlist. They each have their own playlist, but we do the each environment the same. But like I said, the the way the kids interact with each other, they help each other. Uh, let it be a time where they can just talk and and enjoy what they're doing because we require so much of kids that they need a little bit of downtime every once in a while, you know, and I, I think it helps them when, when they're sculpting with the clay, they just are really into it and, and enjoy it because yeah. they're not being required to be perfect. You know, we, we just put too much on them stress wise in high school sometimes, I think. And I think this is one thing that they really enjoy. So it's okay to take your foot off the gas, so to speak, and- Yes, just, yes. Yeah, yeah. Let them that's, guide that's you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, looking back, it sounds like you, you've already, already, um, you've already said that this is the dream job and the dream situation. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, um, but you must be awfully proud of having put in the years in the nursing school, maybe to inform this part of your career, your professional career. So I, I 
think it is because I tell the students a little bit of what they're going to expect when they do get to college. You know, it, it's, there's a huge difference between high school and your college years. And um, I think it has benefited them in several ways and helps them to understand that, you know, here we're watching you learn the different skills while you're in the medical academy. But the, the same thing's going to happen when you go off to college and not be nervous. Learn to interact with your instructors and, um, you know, ask questions. And so they're learning that now and they're getting ahead of those that are just going off to school. That's great. Wow. Well, Jen, this has been a great rundown. Uh, we really appreciate your giving us a peek into your world and how you incorporate anatomy and clay. And uh, we wish you all the best, um, you know, down the road. And um, thanks for all you do for kids. Thank you very much. I was glad to be here today.